The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Reminding you, we'll have a song scramble of 21 pilot songs that you have to unscramble. And that's how you get 21 pilots tickets for the United Center coming up here at 720 with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Mm, mm, mm. The Q101 Morning Crew. Sports. Oh, boy. What a game yesterday. We started off with the broadcast 6 to 10 yesterday. At Almost Home, our favorite spot, one of our favorite spots in Wrigleyville. And they do win handily over the Rockies. I should have bet on that game. You Listen, should have. Listener Fernando comes up to me and goes, bet the White Sox to win, or bet, I bet the Cubs to win and the White Sox to lose. It's a guarantee. First off, it doesn't seem like it's groundbreaking, you know, <laughs> mind-blowing technology there to figure that one out. But I was sitting there going, and I forgot to do it because just oh, – that was a big party broadcast yesterday. No, I, I mean, I think you're still feeling the effects of it. It was kind of a crazy <laughs> 6 to 10 a.m. Yeah, I forgot to put my bet in, so I'm upset about that. But, uh, wow, what a day for Shota Imanaga on the hill. And he comes out first off. Not only does he, you know, sing, hey, Chicago, what do you say when he, in his press conference, which was amazing, but he comes out, his walkout music, Chelsea Dagger. He might be my favorite baseball player of all time already. Of all time. Just one game. I'm in. I'm because, in. Because he sang the song you like, and then he walked out to another song that you like. No, he did other wonderful things. Like, he pitched six innings in his debut, striking out nine Rockies batters while giving up just two hits and zero runs. Okay, not bad. How about that? All right. Uh, he even carried the no-hitter through the sixth inning of the game, which was broken up by the two-out single by uh, Charlie Blackman. But here's the stat of the day. Ibanaga made Cubs history in the game, becoming the first pitcher to strike out at least nine batters allow two or fewer hits, and allow zero runs in their debut from the North Siders. Not bad. That's a long history of baseball there, and here is that ninth one. It just sounds so good. He's so he's so excited. Here it comes. Got him. Yeah. Jones down on strikes. Nine punch outs in his major league debut. Shota Imanaga with six. I love his fist pumping. It sounds like a playoff game in there. It does. It, oh it, it was God. incredible. Well, Case was at the White Sox home opener, which was also incredibly loud last week. Well, it was crowded. I don't know if it was loud. There wasn't hmm. a lot to cheer for. The White Sox never made it past first base in the entire game. Oh, boy. Well, I mean, you know, people were having conversations that got kind of loud. I was sitting in front of a degenerate gambler who was very loudly updating the entire row on the status of his parlay after every at-bat. Oh, no. <laughs> and you'll never believe it, but he lost some money then. Listen, I know I can also be insufferable. When, <laughs> Good self awareness. When, when I have a parlay that's so close and you want to tell everybody about it, it's like telling somebody about your fantasy team. Uh, no one else cares, but you care so much you have to tell everybody. And I wish, and I listen, I'm guilty. Yeah. We have to stop doing it as a society. The problem is that he wasn't close. It's not like he needed one more thing. It would be like the bottom of the third. He's like, all right, I need Jimenez to hit a home run. I need a Luis Robert double. I need the Sox to score seven. It went, he had multiple steps to go. He wasn't anywhere close, and Ugh. he ended up losing money. Yeah, you can't talk about your parlay when you're only two legs into like a nine-leg yeah, exactly. parlay. Yeah, like a nine-leg parlay, and he had maybe one. Yeah, if you have to explain it all that to somebody, <laughs> I'm just trying to eat that s'more shake. That's right. At, at the guaranteed rate. With my fried pickles. No. Oh. So, uh, congrats to the Cubs. They're now 2-2. Two and two. Play again tonight. It's going to be real rainy and crappy, but that game went off pretty much without a hitch. Unlike the White Sox game, because they had a multiple rain delay going on in that game yesterday. Yeah, I mean, it was sparsely attended because it was about 40 degrees and, and cloudy the entire game. And then the eighth inning... We well, realized the north side had the same weather, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was different on the south side, actually. It's about the same. It was different. It was like a different climate. They're about six miles apart, but I mean, it's about the same. <laughs> That's like a different different planet. Anyways, All right. You had a, a rain delay in the top of the eighth inning. Uh, after the top of the eighth inning, rather. So the White Sox were delayed hitting in the eighth inning. The White Sox would end up hitting in the eighth inning, but the game would get uh, uh, finalized after the eighth inning because they didn't want to play the ninth because the White Sox were trailing by so much. They were there trailing no nine, uh, nine nothing. That's right. And yeah, so they, the rain delays happened, but then something bizarre happened. Was this in the sixth? This is in the eighth. So eighth. this is after the rain delay. The Braves are taking the field. The White Sox are ready to hit. But it turns out not all of the White Sox were ready to resume the game. Now, here's the audio. Bear with us here. It's about a minute long. From This is from the Braves announcer's mm -hmm. perspective of what's going on at Guaranteed Rate. So how about this? We have a delay because there is no first base coach right now for the <laughs> Chicago White Sox, which is quite incredible. <laughs> Something usually happens at a Little League game. Oh. It's supposed to be Jason Bourgeois. 
And they, <laughs> so apparently he's not down there. They're yelling anybody. Anybody can coach first base. Can Wiley Ballard coach first base? <laughs> Did you hear someone says, is anybody working here? <laughs> It's kind of like when you walk into a Michaels and all you want is a frame and there's no one around and you can't do self-checkout. It's like, where, where is everybody? Is there anybody working here? I just had this problem at Old Navy last week. I was like, God, I just need a little bit of help. Just, I just want to get out of here. Oh. I didn't know that was a rule that you had to have a first base coach. <laughs> I have never. This is a new one. I've yeah. never seen this. So they are going to send out somebody. Somebody. Tyler Matzik is waiting to enter the game here in the bottom of the eighth after Dylan Lee pitched before the rain delay. It's pretty brutal that somebody has not just grabbed a helmet and gone out there. <laughs> Still no one. This is taking so long. We know how deep stats run. There's so many coaches. And the White Sox are just standing around looking at each other. <laughs> Oh, they're saying that they don't have the Scully helmet. So now they're trying to find the right helmet. There's a, there's a helmet that base coaches are required to wear. Oh, I didn't know they had a different helmet. For protection, because right. they, don't, they don't have any gloves or anything. Sure. So they're kind of sitting ducks. So they, they at this point, have nominated a, a first base coach, but the first base coach does have the right helmet to wear. So they're going to look for the helmet. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, of course, now, yes. base coaches have to wear those helmets. There they got it. <laughs> And they hit Usher and Little John's yeah as the first base coach makes his way to first base. Oh, no. <laughs> Even the White Sox fans. Listen, people think maybe I unduly, you know, maybe rip the White Sox or not. In case of the White Sox fan in the room, I'm the Cubs fan. But that's funny. That That's ridiculous. It's not. It's if, actually, that, if that happened at the Cubs game, I would have played the same audio. It's actually super embarrassing. It's, it's really like, bad. If you ever, because I was watching the, the game as it happened, but I was watching the White Sox feed, obviously. So I didn't hear the Braves announcer's perspective on it until later. It's like when you bring your friend somewhere and your friend embarrasses you. This was a bad look for the White Sox. I'm just embarrassed now. Yeah. It's not going to be a good season. No, it's not. They're 0-4, and if you look at their schedule ahead, you know, they've got two more against the Braves. They've got the Royals, who are going to be much better than they were last year. They've got the Reds, who have a chance to be very good this year. There's a chance they lose their first 15 games. Wow. <sighs> hey, at least they got a first base coach, though. Well, that's why they got one out there now. He knows what's helmet to grab now. <laughs> uh, the Bulls lost to the Hawks last night, 113-101, with about six games left. They had a one-and-a-half game lead over the Hawks in the race for the Eastern Conference ninth seed and home court advantage in that first play-in game. I mean, it's, it's in jeopardy because they lost that game. Uh, and again, you know, we're looking at just getting in the play-in game and then possibly making some kind of run, which we know probably won't happen. Uh, but I think they're going to be okay at this point holding on to that spot as long as they don't lose all six games left. Yeah, no, the, the Bulls, I mean, it would be an utter catastrophe of epic proportions where I think they would have to lose out and the Nets would have to win out, and the Nets are really bad. So even though the Bulls aren't great, they they will be a playing team this yeah. year. Uh, finally, last night, this is what I did after the Cubs game. Um, I'm wrecked from the day of partying, but what a game. The NCAA tournament for the women's uh, game against with LSU and Iowa, that's Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. It's, it's literally like Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. I mean, no one... I'm not being mean here, but the attention to women's basketball has never been at a higher level now because of the rivalry between them and the trash talk. They've brought everything back to a point of almost 90s basketball for I, me. I don't think that's mean. I think that's accurate. Well, I think I'm, I, I guess when I say that, people might say, well, you mean no one watched women's basketball before college basketball? Well, it's certainly at a level where it's never been watched before. No, I don't think a man like yourself, Brian, has been locked in on the women's final four before, but you're super into this. I, since Caitlin Clark got there, I definitely am. My sister-in-law's from Iowa, and then she went to Iowa, and, and you know, so early on on that was on that. But, God, she shoots from half court. She's ridiculous. The NBA should draft her. I, we know there's a, an offer, a $5 million offer Ice Cube made for the big three for her to go there. I feel like that check would bounce, though. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If, we had Ice Cube in here, and he loves, he loves the big three, and he's going to keep pouring money into it. Um, and that's one way to do it. But she's going to go to the WNBA, but I think she should go to the NBA. How cool would that be? The Bulls could use her. The Bulls could use her. They need three-point shooting. Kaylin <laughs> Clark offers that. She could nail them. I really do. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q. 101. All right, here we go. 21 Pilots tickets. We world premiered the music, of course, and announced the show first for you. United Center, Tuesday, October 1st, and Wednesday, October 2nd. So, we have tickets to give you this time for Wednesday. That show, the October 2nd show from our great friends at Live Nation. And, of course, here from Brian and Kenzie on Q101. If you can tell me 
what three songs are in this song scramble. Did you get it? All right, 312-591-8300. Call now. First person through with the correct songs in that order. We'll get the tickets. Here we go. Case thinks I should play it one more time. Listen very carefully. Three one two five nine one eighty three hundred. What three songs are in that song scramble? Give them to me in order. That'd be great. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q one hundred and one. The Brian and Kenzie Show on Q one hundred and one. The Brian and Kenzie Show on Q one hundred and one. Brian and Kenzie on Q one hundred and one. Twenty one pilots taking it to the United Center now. We're trying to get someone to get this song scramble right. Now, if no one gets it right, everybody listening still has a chance at these tickets. Well, God bless the baby and get to those tickets. But here it is. <laughs> Messing with your head, right? Haley's taking in from Chicago. Haley, ahoy. Uh, what's going on? Hi, how are you? We're doing great. So you have to give me those songs in order what you heard there. All right. The first one is Ride. The second one is Chlorine. And the third one is Saturday. Hmm. Let's see. Congratulations. You are going to 21 Pilots. Woo. Thank you. You are so amazing. How many times have you seen 21 Pilots? Um, so far, 75. Oh, wait. Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> Who's laughing in the background? My mother. Wait, I saw it on Facebook. Wait, can you really verify that? You've seen 21 Pilots 75 times? Yes, and that Chicago show will be my 101st time. Wait, I don't get it. You've seen them 75, but you're going to see them that many times in between then to be, you're going to see them almost 30 more times before that Chicago show? Yeah, on their new tour. You just made my life a little bit easier. I'm supposed to be battling the pre-sale war today. <laughs> Oh, my God. Wait a minute. So you follow them all over the country? Yes, and not just the country. Last year, I went to, like, Lollapalooza, Argentina, Lollapalooza, Brazil. I've seen them in, like, 14 countries at this point. 14 countries. By the time the Chicago comes, uh, that'll be 106, you said, or 105? 100. It, well, actually, the first Chicago show will be my 100th, and then the second one will be 101. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Haley, I have a question for you. Yeah, go for it. What do you do? <laughs> How, I don't understand the financials of this. Right. I I genuinely just work at Starbucks, and then I don't spend any money when they're not on tour. So the last year was pretty miserable for me. She works like two jobs, make like a maniac. You never see her. She her, her head is down. She's just pounding the pavement. <laughs> Wow. So think about that next time you get yourself a, a grande latte or whatever the hell they're Some called. Avocado yeah. toast. Yeah. It's your fault you can't <laughs> see 21 pilots. That's right. <laughs> Good gravy. Uh, well, listen, that's amazing. I'm glad a real true fan won these tickets. Woo! And I'm sure Thank mom you. is happy to help, help fund this whole thing. I, I, mom, <laughs> no, she doesn't pay for any of it. She, yeah. she does not pay for any of it, your mom? I'm not taking any of mom's money. <laughs> wow. This is She's different. I would take all my mom's money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, classic uh, Gen Xer there. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> That's fascinating. I did not expect to hear that. I thought she was going to say, I've seen him seven times. No, I had I had no idea it was uh, approaching double digits, let alone triple digits, when I picked her up on the phone and she was the first one to get it right. Well, that's a real fan, I'll tell you that. Yeah, you'd hope at that point she'd get all those songs right. Yeah, I, It'd be embarrassing <laughs> if she had seen 21 Pilots that many times and didn't get the song scramble right. They could play the whole concert backwards and she would know it. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Well, listen, tomorrow, right at this time again, at 720, we're going to do it again, a song scramble for 21 Pilots tickets. We will be doing Clash with Kenzie. She's going to join us, uh, you know, 8 to 10, and we'll do that at 820. We'll get you on the phone for Bonnaroo tickets. So that's coming up next hour. Also, we're going to talk about cicadas again. The cicadas are coming here in Chicagoland, and they pee stronger than us, and an STD turns them into zombies. We're going to talk about that here in about 10 minutes here with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. 
Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Well, I said we'll talk about the cicadas that are coming. It's probably the biggest fascination between the eclipse and the cicadas coming of our area that I'm fascinated by. I wish I could take like a leave of absence and during I wish the, you could too. During the whole <laughs> during the whole time. Right. So just I want to just really live in this moment of the biggest cicada overtaking of Illinois coming and the greatest eclipse of any of our lives is coming up in our area as well. You know what this means, right? With all the all the global sort of once in a lifetime events we have coming up this year, the rapture's coming. We're all gonna be dead. We won't be able to celebrate the anniversary of the eclipse because it will probably take us out. The cicadas don't even have a chance. Well, I think the cicadas are the next generation of what's going to take over the earth. Well, hard to argue with the billions of them that are coming. You say the meek would inherit the earth? The meek? The meek. Mill? Who? No, not who, meek who, mill. Who, what's the meek? <laughs> you can Google that during Gil's headlines. Uh, we'll talk about the cicadas and the eclipse, of course, coming up here in about four minutes with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. First, other headlines from Gil Curtis. This is not headline news. April is National Stress Awareness Month. Actually, so is every month until the presidential election in November. April is Distracted Driving Awareness Month. I think that's what the headline said, but I drove up a curb while I was reading my phone on the way to work. Apple turned 48 yesterday, while their average iPhone assembly worker turned 8. Hackers leaked the private data of millions of AT&T users. Hey, that's our job, said TikTok. And a 94-year-old Ohio woman plans to visit all seven continents which would make her the first person to visit all continents while incontinent. This is not headline news. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. So this has been something that's been fascinating me since, uh, well, since I heard about it the first time, that when the cicadas are coming, it's the biggest cicada infection of Illinois ever in our lifetimes, like 224 years. Do you think this is a Paul Revere, sort of the cicadas are coming, the cicadas are coming type scenario? Well, I definitely think there's more level of concern that should be there than is not. They're trying to brush it off and saying they come up. Every 17 years, they lay some eggs. Well, they have sex. They lay some eggs, and then they die. (laughs) That's a cool life. I mean. That's how I'm trying to be this summer. People say they want a simpler life. Yeah. That's pretty simple. Try being a cicada for a day. Walk a mile in their shoes. Yeah. In all their shoes. They have like eight legs or something. I would think so. They look like little dinosaurs, but they're coming out, and... Uh, we've talked about the problems and the way to solve it. The problems are they're going to be everywhere. You're going to shovel them off your sidewalk, the dead the shells, mm-hmm. because caterpillars like to eat them. So this is good for the caterpillars. When's the last time you saw a caterpillar? I can't remember. Since right? I was a kid. Forgot about those guys. <laughs> Where do you, I mean, I know I live in the city, but they still got to exist somewhere in the city. Uh, I, I, there's some grass here. I, I haven't seen a caterpillar since Obama was in office. <laughs> I don't know, I, when's the last time I saw a caterpillar? I don't think you even saw one then. I think you're just your nostalgia is remembering <laughs> that you saw a caterpillar. I was with rose-colored glasses. Yeah. <laughs> uh, text in 312-591-8300. When's the last time you saw a caterpillar? In re- okay, so explain. The, what's their relationship to cicadas? They like to eat them. Oh, and, okay. and, they, and they can actually get them. They can grab them. I don't Maybe they go like, hey, it's my friend the cicada. Mm. And they come up to them and go, oh, cool, I haven't seen you in 17 years. Yeah, dap them up. And then they die. Yeah. Uh, they eat them. They eat their face. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> they eat their face. Yeah. And so there's going to be all these shells everywhere. That's where you're going to shovel off uh, your sidewalks, your porches, in the burbs, wherever. You know, they're going to be everywhere. So not the cicada itself, but the shell. They're going to be dead by the time we get to them. Oh, cicadas eat them like lobster. Like, they just shell them out. Caterpillars eat them like lobster. Or caterpillars eat the cicadas okay, like that. I didn't that. know that. That's interesting. All right, good good info. Yeah, some more information just to keep you up to date on, on this whole situation is that I just said lobster. Well, the FDA warns you for people out there that want to possibly eat a cicada... <laughs> If you have a seafood allergy, don't, because they have that same kind of effect of eating lobster if you have a seafood allergy. Uh-huh. They're, they're, I guess, a land crustacean. Okay, that makes sense. So don't eat them. Uh, I don't want to eat them. Caterpillars do. Maybe I, I've never heard of a caterpillar with a seafood allergy, <laughs> <laughs> let alone seeing one in the last 20 years. I would, I would like to eat a cicada. Uh, no, you wouldn't. Well, okay, that's our bit then. That's fine. I'd like to try it. Would you eat a live cicada? Oh, I don't know. Is there a difference? Because I don't want, like, a day-old cicada. I don't want, like, Jimmy John's leftover bread. Oh, you know no. what I mean? I want it fresh. So you'll you'll eat that thing in your hand, the crawling one, you'll just eat it. I don't... I, I mean, I, I, I don't want to knock it before I try it. Oh, well, 
that it might be like a rare meat, you know? Like some steakhouses only have like they're like here here's our Brazilian cut. This is a big deal. We only get this once a year. Yeah. The cicadas might be good. We just don't know it. Cicada tartar. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, questions coming in. 815. Can dogs eat cicadas? Well, they do have a crunchy shell. So I don't know if it gets caught in your dog's throat, whereas the caterpillars know how to eat them and then leave the shell behind. I don't they, think they just eat their face. Yeah, dogs just like, they just go at it. They're like, ah. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't trust your dog eating them. <laughs> We're getting texts about the last time people saw cicadas, or I'm sorry, caterpillars. For some people, it's been since February. We're in April now. They went a whole month without seeing a caterpillar. I haven't seen one. I'm telling you, I haven't seen one in probably at least a decade, maybe more. Um, now, 630 checked in. I work for the Forest Preserve. Uh, Icy caterpillars every year regularly. Wow. So, sees them all the time. Is that a perk of the job? Do you think that's listed? Like, when you apply, it's like, hey, just so you know, a lot of caterpillars out here. Oh, God, another caterpillar <laughs> coming by. What a peaceful job that sounds like. Forest preserve? Yeah. No, I disagree. Why is I that? think you'd go crazy. Why? What do you do? Well, call in, sir, if you're in the work for the forest preserve, because I just think you sit and look at nature. That's probably not that's right. That's not a real job. It, that's he's a get, hobby. Getting paid. I, I Probably not much. Who I'd cares? Love, I'd love to know if the Forest Preserve guys were cleaning up, if we're just in the wrong industry. You look up salaries of Forest Preserve people. <laughs> but I, I think it, it seems like you go sit in the park and enjoy things. Maybe you got to rouse people from trying to have sex in the parking lot. I don't know if that's your job. <laughs> I'm not sure. But I'd love for somebody from the Forest Preserve to call up the Park Service of Chicagoland, wherever you work, in a park. Let me know. I want to know all about that job. So, Brian, your, your wife, Megan, she's a really good baker, Correct. Correct. Somebody texted in 630. They said the last time cicadas came out, there was a recipe in the Tribune for a cicada pie crust. Hmm. That sounds like something we should try. It's probably crunchy. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't like pie. I only like blueberry pie. <laughs> so if we can have blueberry pie with cicada crust, I'll try it. What's going wrong in your life to where you only like blueberry pie? All the rest of them suck. I disagree. Unless it's a chocolate pie, like an ice cream kind of chocolate. Okay. Like you get a, like a, uh, you get a um, Dunkin'. They mm -hmm. have those pies in there. Okay. The Baskin Robbins, the combo ones. You can do that. All right. I'm not telling you how to eat pie, I'm just saying. <laughs> but here's some of the other weird things about the cicadas coming. Apparently, they pee really strong. So I've talked about this yesterday a little bit, that they can uh, pee. They'll pee on us when they get there. But they're actually the strongest urinators in the animal kingdom, cicadas are. The strongest? The strongest. It shoots. And like in by comparison to their body size, uh -huh. it's way better than us. And I thought I could really pee. I thought I, I, I thought I could, like if I I thought I, I've taken bark off a tree before. Like I thought I could really go, but apparently cicadas are way ahead of us. That's on that. the video we gotta get. I'm sure I'm sure our our digital media specialist Zach has like a slow motion like 60 frames per second camera uh -huh. that he can get a cicada peeing, and then we see what kind of damage he does compared to you. Oh, I thought you wanted to get me running after cicada trying to pee on it. <laughs> <and drop. laughs> Because they can probably move a little faster than me with my pants down. I don't know. Wait, wait, are you in order, in order to be on a cicada, you have to start with your pants down? Yeah. You have to, you have I got to get comfortable the in the environment first. Silly me. I'm sorry. That was a stupid question. Like, literally, they put humans and elephants to shame with their urination, what they can do. That, did you do you ever this is this is gross but I think we're in a tree of trust here where mm. everybody knows is gonna know what I'm talking about right do you ever try to do trick shots with your pee and like stand really far back and see how far you can go <laughs> <laughs> of course I've tried that yeah no it's like yeah. NBA all-star weekend in my bathroom yeah. I'm doing like 360s oh in your bathroom <laughs> I mean like outside oh no I do it indoors no, I miss the toilet regularly <laughs> And not, it's not a fun way. Also, here's a, here's a concerning thing about them that also, just more about the cicadas that are coming, they're being ravaged by STDs that turns them into zombies. I am sorry, explain. So there is a fungus that I don't, it's not like, you know, herpes, but it's like that for them, but it's not called herpes. It's called xylem. Sounds so, way more deadly than herpes. It sounds like it. So this thing goes right inside the cicadas. Now, I guess it's because they come out to bang. That's what they do. Uh -huh. And then they die. But if one lives long enough to bang somebody else, it gets transmitted. It's going to kill 10% of the billions that are on their way to Illinois. Wow. Yeah, so it turns them into zombies where their private parts fall off. <laughs> <laughs> their only reason for living is to, <laughs> is to bang. And this would not be funny if it was a human disease. This might jump sometime. There might be a oh, little mutation. You're like, so they're alive still, but they're basically like the walking dead. Like they're walking around as these zombie cicadas with no private parts. 
and it, that's what's going to happen to 10% of them. Oh, that's like an epidemic. 10% is a lot. Well, there's going to be billions, so it's going to be millions that get this. That millions. Have the junk, you're just going to see cicada junk scattered all over the streets. Oh, it was bad enough with the shells, but now <laughs> cicada <laughs> junk? Good Lord. <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101.